Welcome to MathCast Edition 8, where we will be using the area model to illustrate common factoring with a constant and a binomial. Quick review of algae tiles. Blue will be positive algae tiles. Red will be negative algae tiles. The zero principle applies, so a pair of x squared and negative x squared would cancel each other off for zero. And lastly, the most important rule we need to remember is that algae tiles can only contact each other along the same side length. If we don't follow that today, then none of what we look at will actually make sense. And a quick example of that, x can contact an x squared along the same or shared side length, whereas a 1 can never touch an x squared term because it does not have any of the shared side lengths. Review of the greatest common factor. You may wish to pause at this moment in time and review this if you have not watched MathCast Edition 7. Uh, take a moment to read this, so please pause now and go over it. So using the area model to common factor, in previous MathCast we were using the area model to illustrate the product of multiplying various dimensions together uh, to form areas inside the black lines that sort of separated between the dimensions and the areas, and we'll see that in our next example. So, and when we did that multiplication, it was also called expanding. We were taking the dimensions and finding the area. For what we're working on today, it will be called factoring. And this is different because we will be starting with the area of a rectangle and working backwards to find the dimensions. So factoring and expanding are opposites of each other, in essence. So let's get started. I would like to factor 2x plus 6. So I've put all of those algae tile pieces out here. And now I need to try and arrange them into a rectangle that I could determine the dimensions of. So if I start with the larger pieces, I could put these in contact like this. And that would be acceptable. I could put them in contact this way. And again, that would be acceptable. So I'm going to try this model for a minute and see what happens. I can put 1's next to the X's because those side lengths are the same. So I'm going to build on that a little bit. I can continue adding these in and lo and behold, I have a little pattern building here and I've made a rectangle. So there's the area model inside. Now I wish to take this and work backwards and get the dimensions. So I know that the edge here, the left edge of the X algae tile is one unit in length. So I'm going to put a one unit there as well as the one on the bottom. I know that the length along the top is X units long. So I'll put an X up there. And if I check this now, one times X equals X. So that works. So if I move along here, just double checking. 1 times 1 is 1. Those seem to be a nice fit, so I'll just fill in the rest here. Now on the left hand side I have a dimension of 2. On the top I have a dimension of x plus 3. So when I factor 2x plus 6, the result is 2 times the bracket of x plus 3. Another way of looking at this problem is using the greatest common factor. So if I broke up the two pieces the 2x and the 6 into their factors, or prime factors, I can see that they both have a 2 in common. And oddly enough, there's the 2 out front. I'd also like to point out that these values that are unbolded and left behind, those are the terms that are left inside the brackets. Let's try example 2. In example 2, I have negative 3x minus 12, and I wish to factor that. So I'm going to start by arranging some of these pieces. Again, I always start with the big ones, and I want to put them edge to edge. Now I could do this, but it creates a problem, because I can only put 1s on this small side of the negative x bar. I wouldn't be able to put them here, because this contact point would be incorrect. I don't have the same length. So stacking these three negative x's in this orientation isn't going to help. So I'm going to try it this way. And I can see that, oh, okay, I've got some opportunities to place my negative ones here. And they seem to fit okay. I'm following all my rules. 
and away I go. So that made a nice little rectangle. Now if I measure the edges here, this is where things get a little bit tricky and we have to slow down and think about this. So if I put a positive 1 here, I would need to have a negative x on top to multiply together to get my negative x. If I have a positive 1 here, I would have to put a negative x up here to get my negative 1s. So this is one option, okay, and it will work, and I would end up with a factor of 3. But I'd like to show this as well. If I started with a negative 1 here, then I could put a positive x on top. Now both of these would be correct, but I'm going to proceed with this one for now. So I'm going to put negative 1's down this side for a total of negative 3. Now negative 1 times something has to give me negative 1. Well the only possibility for that is to put a positive 1 there. And I can just stack those on top. And away I go. Now the dimensions for this top here would be x plus 4, and there it is. So when I factor negative 3x minus 12, one of the possibilities is negative 3 times the bracket of x plus 4. If I change these signs to positive, what I would find is I would just have 3 out front, and it would be negative x minus 4. Completely acceptable answer as well. However, we're looking for the greatest common factor and we can see that because negative 3x and negative 12 both have a negative 1 in, to get 1 in them as a building block, we might as well try and factor that out right at the beginning. So negative 1 and 3 are both common. And again, I'd like to point out, if we check this with distributive property, negative 3 times x, negative 3x, negative 3 times positive 4, negative 12. Also, the unbolded terms right there and there, the x and the two twos, that's what's left inside the bracketed term. 